Hey everybody, welcome to Keyboard Skills Pro. My name's Tom and welcome to my YouTube channel. Before you do anything else, please do hit that subscribe button and ding the old Liberty Bell so you'll know every time we upload a new video or go live here on the channel. Well, it's my pleasure today to bring you part three and a little walkthrough lesson of Joplin's Pineapple Rag. And uh, we've had a lot of requests for part three and uh, sorry it's taken this long to do a video, but obviously with everything that's been going um, on in the world in terms of, uh, you know, uh, obviously the pandemic and keeping lessons going online. A lot of things have had to, unfortunately, take a little bit of a backseat. But we're now back and Keyboard Schools Pro is growing. We've got a new studio coming um, dedicated to the videos here on the channel. So more news on that very soon. But let's now dive in to part three. And we have, of course, just finished off um, the... Um, this uh, reprise of the main theme that goes. That old bit there, and of course we finish off. Now what we want to first of all do is notice how we actually finish that last section, and then we'll lead in and take a look at the right hand. Now this, this part three, as I call it, is, is really what we would term a trio. Um, the trio is sometimes what you see at the top of a, a rag and a lot of people ask me what is the trio the trio literally means the third strain the third part of the piece and so normally um, you have the main theme the second strain and then the main theme gets repeated so you get an a b a structure and then we have um, a, a kind of a c and a d section um, which get a couple of repeats so so this is our our third part as it were so let's take a look at the last chord so we've just gone da 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 and we've then come in with this last chord which of course is before the bar finishes and then we come in with with that on the left hand look so it's an octave okay and we're holding that last b flat chord because that's that's what it is it's the tonic chord so it's da 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 the end okay so that's how that finishes all right That we should have done that in the last part of the second video. So if you haven't seen parts one and two and are interested in learning Pineapple Rag, then please do check those out. Okay, so we now have a little lead in with some thirds. Okay, now we have to work out how that is timed. So we've just finished by going one and two, E and uh. So that's the that's the uh, the bar there you can see on the screen. One and two, and that's the left hand. One and two and uh, da. So if you count one and two, and then you want to get these two fingers on the A flat and the C, and walk down like this, nice and smooth. And then just quickly start to turn your hand to land on this E flat chord. Okay, now that's a second inversion E flat chord. Okay, and we'll talk a bit about that in just a second. So, finishing off. There's a very clean ending. So, one and two, E and a. Now, here we go with the chord. So, as I come down, look, swing your hand round and get your thumb, your middle, and your little finger like that. So, you, you could come off the last note a bit uh, staccato like. Okay, da, 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 do, 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 do. and you should practice that to, so you can leap through the air, finishing off. You could also cross over, look, but it's a bit messy. So I like to come down my three fingers and then come off. Okay, there we go. Now, what we now want to do is look at this rhythm here. Okay. Now, I don't know if you recognise that rhythm. Yes, you, some of you maybe do. You know I'm a, one of these fans um, of rhythmic words and rhythmic phrases, things to help us learn. And uh, <laughs> one guy, somebody, on one of my videos recently put a comment, um, which I think was maple leaf rag, and I'm going on about these pineapples or something. And pineapple is a word I use to 
to teach people triplets, pineapple, pineapple. It's a really good word. And the guy put, um, somebody put, um, <laughs> man, this guy likes pineapples way too much. <laughs> to which I replied, well, they are both good for you, both musically and health wise. So uh, there we go. But the comments do make me laugh sometimes. But uh, yeah, pineapple for triplets, gang. But that pattern there, that's my follow the, follow the. And if you imagine that carrying on to a long rhythm, follow the leader. Follow the leader. Now, if you clap, take out the tie look on the last E flat chord. Like that. Okay, so. By taking the tie out, it's a very small tie, isn't it? You can hardly see it there, but it is there. Um, it actually helps you learn the rhythm. Follow the leader. Follow the leader. Now, what we've got to do is, is not say, when we go, follow the the the, the the, sorry, clumsy phrasing, the the and the lee of leader are tied together. Follow the leader, follow the lead. And we'd emphasize it, you see. Ba, ba, ba. So notice there, look though, it's the top and the bottom notes that are going down. And what's happening is we're losing this A flat because look at the key signature look there's a key signature change did you notice that no probably not because we've been in B flat for over 50 bars all right so so the A flat that was introduced is now modulating the music to a different key in this case E flat major this is the subdominant key of E flat of G, B flat sorry okay so what you've got to do is you've got to keep the E flat in the center, middle finger, index finger, whatever you, whatever you feel comfortable with. I quite like the middle finger. And then you turn it down like this. So we've got A natural and F sharp. And all it is, it, it's more or less the same chord, but it's going into a diminished chord. Ba, ba, ba. And notice how we emphasize the second and third chords. Da, da. Follow the lead. Okay, so remember that rhythm because that follow the leader, follow the leader. So I'm, that's, I'm not drunk, don't worry, I'm just stringing the words into one. All right, so that is that rhythm and we're gonna use that a lot in this third section. So keep an eye on that. Okay, so let's take a walk through the right hand. So we've come down, look, ba, ba, ba. Don't forget the A flat there, look at the end, it's A flat um, on the first A, it will also be A flat again on the last day. Ba, 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 follow the leader. Okay, now we're gonna to go to, um, we're gonna to go to say one and two, C and E flat, and here's that same rhythm look. Okay, a G flat now to give us a dominant, stronger seventh sound. But again, look, follow the leader. Okay. Ba, ba, now, there's an important thing here. If you look very closely at that bar, can you see there's almost like two sets of quavers there? One has got on the first beat, there's a, the beam is pointing up, but then underneath there's a different set. Okay, and this sometimes happens in piano writing. They split the stave, so you almost get like two musicians playing at the same time. So the C um, underneath um, has got a dot next to it okay so that means we're going to hold it down for a quaver and a half or a quaver and a semi-quaver and so you've got to hold it down whilst you play the e and the f okay follow and then on the you play lift it up and you play again the c and the e flat but we're just going to put the g flat in this time and then hold those down and walk down now a lot of people often say well if you're holding an e flat how can you play it again well you have to sort of fill in the holding note because musically it has to take up the beat um, so in that case it's a crotchet but we obviously lift it up to play the last e flat and, and we let the um the audience the listener kind of fill in the gap as it were they're still singing that note in theory so follow the leader follow the leader okay cha 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 so make sure you emphasize that chord, look. 
and then open up to an E flat. Okay, so let's work that through again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. And follow the leader, follow the leader, one and, okay? So that's how that works, okay? So very, uh, you that, that rhythm, follow the leader. Gotta hold that down, okay? Now once we've hit that E flat chord, we're gonna go up to here and play this little B flat seven chord, because obviously, as you know, with E flat major, one and five, tonics and dominants, one is E flat, five is dominant. So that's why we're gonna to go to that little chord there, okay? So we're gonna finish on there. One, two, E and A. Uh, so we're playing our B flat chord, look. And then we wanna use these three fingers, one, two and three because we want our three and our five up here for that same little walk down again. Do you remember the beginning, how it introduces it? Okay, and we're gonna basically then start to repeat a little bit. Okay, so let's walk that through. and Now, next line look, okay, now it starts the same. So you see, you're getting really used to that rhythm now, aren't you? Follow the lead. Okay, then we go up to here to C minor, and then we drop the C to a B flat, play that E flat chord, and then play G minor. Now again, there, look, look at that rhythm, look. Follow the lead, duh, and we go up to this uh, G minor chord at the top here. So you have to remember, in a lot of bars, most of the notes, either for half of the bar or all the bar, will relate to one kind of chord, okay? So you have to bear that in mind. If you're playing one bar, there's a lot of G minor chords. Probably the left hand is playing G minor notes as well. Okay, so let's go from that second line of that section. So we start off with the same rhythm. Follow the Lee, and then we jump up to C minor, and then drop our C to our B flat, Follow the lead. Okay, so we're right up here now. D, G, B flat. Keep our B flat now. Here's that rhythm again, gang, on the mezzo forte. Look, C, F sharp, B flat. And look underneath, look, there's those chords holding underneath, look. So this time we're going to drop to A natural this time. We're going to go follow the lead. Okay, ba bum. So just, just slide off there if you want. Look, same chord again. Follow the lead. One. Okay. Da da ba ba bum bum. So notice the syncopation there. Look, one e and a uh, two e and a uh, one. Okay, and then you start to hear the rhythm. All right. So. That's our first sort of um, eight bars or so, and uh, we're now gonna take a look at that whole right hand again. So let's play it through. One, two. Okay, keep the E flat there. One, two, walk down. So look, three and five, look. C minor, E flat, G minor, ba, ba, make it nice and short, look. Up to G minor at the top, C and F sharp, just drop those down, look, as a fourth. And look at the chord, look, one E and a two E and one. Okay, so that's our right hand of those eight bars. Now, if you're looking at the music that you've got in front, you probably think, well, hang on, there's a lot more yet, Tom. Well, don't worry, because there's a lot of repetition. Um, so it's important that these first eight bars are nicely learned. Let's take a look now, back at the beginning, at the left hand. So, where have we come from? Well, we've just finished with our ending. B flat chord, okay? And then we can come off that. Now this is where the left hand really has a very different sound. In fact, for me, this is the most 
almost non-ragtime kind of section in this piece because we don't have the, the usual um, bass chord pattern. We've now got more of like a walking bass pattern. It's very graceful, almost like a more of a, a relaxing dance. So the left hand more or less always bears resemblance to the chords in the right hand, but for starters, what Joplin does, he abandons his one and five routine, and he actually goes to the major six. So don't forget, we're in E flat major, so scale. There it is, look, and he goes E flat, we're down here, not this E flat near middle C, the next one down, we're off the stave, look on a ledger line, one and, and then you want to bring maybe a third, maybe a second finger, whatever you feel comfortable with using. Um, and we're going to go B flat, E flat, B flat, G. So it's one and two, E and uh, you might decide to do two and four, but you, you'll find a comfortable fingering there that suits your hand. But definitely little to thumb for starters. Then repeat. Now notice there's a phrase line, or a slur, I should say, under the, the notes. So that means you can break them apart, two separate um, groups. Do, 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 do. And of course, that quick bit with the semiquavers is used on the tied chord. Okay, so that's how that works. So that's a, that's an unusual thing for, well, not unusual, I suppose, but I think it's unusual for Joplin to do that because, you know, normally in all his other rags, it's very distinctive. So you see, it's very obvious what's going on. Tonic and roots look. Okay, um, tonics and uh, dominants rather. So, so to use a major six is 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 a different sound. It gives it a C major six. So a little bit more of a stridey piano sound may be coming from Joplin here. One and two E and uh, one E, two E and uh, now, a, now, now he, having said all that, now he goes back to his A flats and his um, E flats. So holding the A flat though and adding the E flat to it. Why? Well underneath is a line under each A flat and that makes that A flat a crotchet. So it's play the A flat and then hold the E flat on the top. Yes, it looks like a quaver. It is a quaver, but it's also, as soon as you play it, it instantly turns into a crotchet. So it's one and two and, and then this lovely E flat major arpeggio. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying to me on that screen, uh, hang on Tom, you just told us that little line underneath the bottom note makes it a crotchet. How the dickens are you supposed to hold that down? Well, you could just pop a bit of pedal down there. There you go, look. Off on the B flat. Makes a lovely sound, doesn't it? Okay, so that's that first little section. Hold, add, hold, add, arpeggio, and next bit. Okay, so that's how that first little bit's go. Let's take a look at the next line. Um, we start again with the same right hand, so we start with the same left hand, E flat to C. Now, we've now got a, a different rhythm. So we're gonna go one and two E and, okay, so that little, pattern there, you could use the word, um, I don't know, let's go for dinosaur. Wave a dinosaur, okay, do, do, because we're modulating here to some different chords. Then we could lift up, G, D, G, B flat, G, D, and again, there's that rhythm look, same rhythm. Da, da, dum. Okay, so ba, 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 do, 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 do. Then we go to some rather nice notes. If you can't reach these, here's a little tip. Use your thumb to play the middle C and the D. D, press, D, press. Okay, one, two, one, and. And there's a G minor chord at the end, look. Bum, and then jump down like that. So you're gonna go G minor and a broken G minor chord. So again, he's using the inversion of G, look. 
Okay, so that's the first eight bars. And let's now see if we can place those together. Hope you're enjoying this video, folks. We're uh, working our way through part three of Ma uh, not Maple Leaf, get it right, Tom, Pineapple Rag by Scott Joplin. And um, if you landed on this video and, and are wondering, oh, I don't know this piece, um, then you need to go back to part one and you can learn all these little bits about it. So uh, let's see now if we can pop it together. Now, don't forget, we know with Joplin and Ragtime in general, it's all about syncopation. Okay, so here we go then. So let's look at the rhythms there. So we've got a follow the. Okay, now we've got to put that C in between the last chord and the one before it. There you see, so it still comes in while the C is still playing. A bit slower. So you see there, look, everything follows on after the other. One, da, 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 mm, cha, 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 ba, ba. So those two bars are exactly the same, a little bit quicker. So you might just want to play those two bars for starters, just to get yourself used to those rhythms. The thing of ragtime is, is just keep playing it over and over and over, and eventually the muscle memory learns it. So those are our E flat chords. Da, da, da. Now, we now want to go to this A flat chord, A flat and E flat, and don't forget, we're holding the bottom note, adding the top note. But again, look at those rhythms, look. Follow and it lines up at the end. Da, da. Big E flat chord, little pedal now. And then off on this B flat seven chord. Because as you come up the arpeggio, look. Open your hands right up. Okay, and then land over here, turn your thumb round, finger over the thumb, and then you'll land there. And you must land with those three fingers on the right hand because you must get your third on the A flat ready for the thirds walking down. Okay, so watch that section again, that. Here we go. So I'm really emphasizing that chord because then we get the syncopation. line. Here we go. Salt's the same. But then we go up to this C minor chord. So look at that rhythm there. Look. So back. Da, da, da. Because we want to get to that C note. So that's why we do the, the different pattern on the left hand. One and dinosaur. So on the saw, that's where you play. Dinosaur. Okay, now we need to get our hand a bit higher now on the left hand. Don't forget, we're knowing this follow the leader pattern now, aren't we? Really well, look. As long as you make the first chord really short, okay. And again there, look, that's the same rhythm as the bar we've just played. Take a look at that, look, bar 60 and 61, look. Exactly the same. So if you practice that bar, Dinosaur, follow the dinosaur. Oh, there you go, look. Follow the dinosaur. There's our, there's our rhythm pattern, gang. Follow the dinosaur. Follow the dinosaur. Ah, <laughs> like that. Yes. Follow the dinosaur, as opposed to the dinosaur chasing us. There we go. That's 60 and 61. Now, why have we come up here? Well, we now want to open our hand up to this D7 chord. Remember that rhythm? Follow the leader, dum, da, 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 dum, and then we carry on, okay? But again, I mean, you know, if you want to experiment with doing that, by all means do. You don't necessarily have to hold that D down. I know that's what the music says, but experiment with it. If that really floats your boat, go for it. Here we go, then here's the next bar. Ba, ba, ba. So look, see how it works. So look how I'm doing it. Look, I'm going together, 
and then straight onto the next right hand note to get there before the next chord. You've got to slide off that. Da -da, and hold on to it. Hold. G minor. Do, do. Right, now look at that. Look, so I'll play that chord. Look, strike, walking. And then we've got this little passage. Ah, now look at that. Look. Right, so now we've got an extension of our opening run because we need a bit more to it, don't we? So, dum, ba, 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 and then it carries on repeating. Next line. God bless the man who invented the repeat. There's the difference, right? So let's take a look at that right now. So we've gone through that first section. So at this point in the video, if you think, oh, hang on, you're losing me a bit, we'll go back and just work through the first eight bars, okay? Because after eight bars, Joplin does a good chunk of repeating, okay? And you'll find a lot of rhythmic rep repetition, a lot of um, uh, tricks that are reused and, and this is the thing actually with with Joplin or not just Joplin but ragtime music in general if you actually um, really start to uh, get used to how a composer or how a style is actually written then you, you will then find all pieces in that style and by that composer a lot of people say once you learn how to play Bach you, you can play Bach and that is pretty true and it's the same with Bergmuller and Haydn and Mozart. There are stylistic things that composers do. My, my, I myself am a published composer. I have three piano books um, in, in a series called Pianistic. Uh, you can check those out on the website. And in fact, in Pianistic Book 1, there is a rather snazzy rag, uh, which we might do a lesson on, actually. That might be a nice one. It's called the Chromatic Rag. And guess what that teaches you how to do? Anyway, so where do we get to then? Same chord, but this time instead of going, we're going to go through a, a straight arpeggio. Back to B flat, and then bring your hand to this chord, which is E flat 7. And this G is going to walk to the next A flat, okay? So that's that little passage. So maybe put a circle around that, just so you don't fall into the trap of it being exactly the same. You don't want to do that, you want to do this. And then that, E flat seven. Now, two on E flat, one on D, five on the B flat. This G is gonna walk up to, um, to the, um, <laughs> wake up Tom, the A flat. Now look here, look, we've got, uh, let's, let's do this bit both hands together, that won't do you any harm. Um, now here, look, we've got an A flat chord, but with a, so often he'll, he'll delay the main A flat note by putting a, a note above it in. Da -da. So here, look, we're gonna go all A flat chords. Okay, and look at the left hand look. There's that one and five pattern we've used before. One, so again, it's follow the, see how it comes in, look. Follow, get to that second note as quick as you can. And then B and holding the chord down, look. Da, da, ba. And then all you gotta do is put an F sharp in with the A natural as you play the C. Look at that lovely lift, look. Half a tone up. Right? Big octaves now, octaves till the end. This is easy, look, hold those down. G in the middle this time. See, look, see how I've got there before the next bass note, look. So this is C minor, up to E, well, well E, C, it's not really C minor, sorry, it's E flat six, I should apologize. Oh, coffee's wearing off. Anyway, uh, holding the B flat, so look, B flat up to B flat middle, so octave goes bottom to top. Follow the leader. Okay. Follow the dinosaur. That was our pattern. Sorry, completely wrong. Follow the dinosaur. Okay. And then very quickly lift your hand up. Bottom B flats. 
Okay, down this time. I'm just off the camera here, but I'm playing bottom B flat right down the bottom here, gang. And um, here we are on the last little bit, and we're going to go. Da, da. This is a nice chord. Look at that. Look, A flat, C, G, falling to F. Lovely F minor or a B flat. Okay, up to D, A flat, C, B flat, jumping off to A flat. D and G, and then a big E flat chord. And look at that, look, we've got the fifth in there as, as well, okay? So last little bit again, then here we go. And down, and then everything moves down, look. Da, da, chord, nice and short, and then one. Two and B flat seven via F sharp to the beginning. Follow the caterpillar, follow the dinosaur caterpillar. Da, 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 da. So remember that. Follow the dinosaur, follow the dinosaur. Two chords, I should have done that. Closed arpeggio, back to B flat, G on E flat seven. Stay here, look. Just drop down like that. Diminished octaves, E flat, and then jump down. Reverse the octaves, but top to bottom this time. Lovely call that. Da da. Now when you finish there, you're going to go on the second time, two, three, and then we're into the next section, okay. So that's our fourth bit, which we'll do very soon. So there we go, everybody. I hope that's been a useful um, half an hour spent in each other's company. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Any questions, put them in the comments below or email me via the website tomhorton.co.uk. If you have enjoyed this free YouTube piano tutorial, please do consider supporting these videos because the production of these videos does take time and investment. Um, but if you'd like to get behind my channel, building my subscription, and uh, if you want to really help me out, please visit patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro, where you can also download um, a, an annotated score when I've put some notes in and things we've talked about in the video. So you can get that on patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro and supporting the channel gang. If, if you like these videos, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to give you my professional time for free, but a little support from you guys does go a tremendously long way. And there's some great people who are already doing that. But uh, wherever you are in the world, take care of yourselves and enjoy the old pineapple rag and we'll see you very soon here on Keyboard Skills Pro. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.